Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, we're um, we're going to start out the service a, a little bit differently this morning. So, there's a brand new song that dropped yesterday. Um, the name of the song is called "The Dove," and it's sung by an artist by the name of Carrie Joe. And I just want to kind of prepare you. Um, the song is kind of long; it's like nine minutes. But we just want you to listen and and watch and just soak, soak in the message of the song. It's absolutely beautiful. And then we'll pick up from there, okay? And good morning, glad you're here. I know it was uh, maybe a late night for some of you and so we're really glad to see you guys this morning, all right? <coughs> Father, we do invite your spirit into our service this morning. God, uh, create a longing in our hearts for, for just you. Um, Lord, create a hunger in us for your word and for just your presence. Um, God, we do pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us um, fresh and anew, uh, not, not for our own purposes, but for just filling the ministry, reaching others for Christ. God, give us a burden for the unsaved, Lord. Um, and I pray that uh, you would just be in this service this morning and that you would just open up our eyes and our heart and our ears uh, for the message. God, we, we love you so much and we pray this in your beautiful son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to use this very heavy because I still don't have much of a voice. Those uh, songs that we just did were the songs... Um, normally, Noemi picks the songs out, but yesterday while I was studying, those were the songs that were on my, I have a list that I play, and I don't update it, it's updated by Apple Music, and I was sitting there, and normally I keep the music really soft while I'm studying, but um, I forget what the first song was that played, but then that first song that we did, Carrie Job's song, came on second, and um, I just blasted it, I mean, I my music was loud enough probably I don't know who could have heard me, but it would have been embarrassing. But <laughs> So I wanted to, and it's amazing because it, it, it kind of rolls into what we're talking about today and what we're going to be um, looking at for this year. So today obviously starts a brand new year. It's 2023. So you can pat yourself on the back. You haven't messed up too bad this year. You've gone, you know, it's, it's, you haven't really blown it this year yet, hopefully. Um, then again. It is 11 o'clock already, <laughs> so maybe you have, um, and that's okay, <laughs> but what a year 2022 was. We had a, a very uh, busy year. Uh, uh, I spent the last couple of uh, weeks really reflecting over, or the last few days really reflecting over this last year and, and what's happened and what we're doing, and I was thinking about this time last year. This time last year, we were meeting at Steve and Jody's house. You know? So, I mean, we were very new uh, coming together and, and then met at the orchard for several months before we came here to the VFW Hall. And, you know, as I was thinking about all of that, it's so much easier for us to where we're standing now, turn around and see God's hand just unconsciously, and, and our unconscious, well, we're not conscious of his hand moving us, but him kind of leading us through things. And so it's a lot easier for us to look into that rear view mirror and uh, think, wow, God, you know, you, you really did know what you were doing. <laughs> you really were leading me. You, weren't, you didn't abandon me. You didn't leave me, but you were there. And not only were that, you were using the circumstances of my life in a way to, to help me. And I know, I know in that analogy of the rear view mirror, it's much smaller than the windshield because we're supposed to be looking forward and not supposed to be focused on the past. But we do, it is good for us to look backwards from time to time and see what God has done and how he's led us to this point. And when I think about that, I look back and see what God has done this year and, and even God given me a job that he provided for me and to provide the tangible needs of our family. And, as I can somebody help this poor guy coming forward he needs help he needs Jesus somebody get a Bible Amen. quick <laughs> but as I was looking at and seeing how God provided the job and take care of our family you know uh, but and I'm, I'm so thankful that he did that for our family but 
you know, the more I move forward, the more I go forward, I'm, I'm looking forward to what God is going to do and how he's going to get me out of that job and back full-time serving him again one day soon. Amen. And I'm excited Amen. about that. Right. I think we will get there soon. But, you know, Faithway is in its beginning stages today. We are, it's, it's a new year. It's, it's a new time for us. And who knows what next year at this time will look like for us. I'm excited to see what God's doing. It's time for us to start pouring gas on what's, what God is doing here. You know, we're, we're established now. We're moving forward. Um, Dave and Tim have been working hard and getting some documents ready for us to, to present to you guys to look at and, and move forward getting things really going for our church. But God didn't, because, because God didn't shake us out of our comfort zone just to come together like a country club and fall asleep at the spiritual wheel and just to hang out and have fun because we're friends. God's called us to do something special for him. None of us are here by accident. God brought each one of us here for a purpose and with a purpose to do something for him. And, and every one of us has a role to play and we can't, we can't move forward anymore with bench warmers. Uh, I've been begging God to put us in the game. And I believe that's what God's done and that's why we're here. Because planting a church is not for the faint of heart. It's not for wimps. It's not for people who are lazy. It's a lot of work. It's, it's tough. It takes a pioneering spirit and it takes someone who's willing to, as, as I've heard growing up, charge the gates of hell with a squirt gun. Uh, you've got to have some some go-get-it attitude and that pioneering spirit to really do it. And I believe that's true of each one of us here today, and I believe that's what God's calling us to do. We're shining the light of Christ into a dark world, and we're the hands and feet of Jesus here in this community here in Baser. So yes, we're supposed to support missionaries in other parts of the world, but God has called us here, and God has called us now. And this is the area that he's called us to focus in on, and he's put us right here in the middle of this community at this time in history for a reason. Because each of us has a call of God on our lives to make a difference. Each of us has a role to play. We all have a job to do. And I know we're at the very beginning stages. And we're small in number now. But when did God ever use the majority? Never. <laughs> no. He never has. He always works through the minority. Think about the, the 12 spies that went into the land of Canaan. Ten of them came back and gave a bad report and only two of them came back with the positive and said, let's go, let's do it. Think about Gideon's 300, how they went against the thousands and thousands and thousands of enemy soldiers, and God kept whittling his numbers down. Or, or about how Jesus, who called 12 men to him, and they changed the world. Everything big always starts small. And that's why I love the minor prophets in the Old Testament, and they're minor in size, not in their message. It just means they wrote just a little bit. They didn't write a big book. It's a small book, so they call them the minor prophets. But one of them is Zechariah. And the theme of Zechariah is, is that our greatest need is God's spirit, not our own strength. And it's amazing that that's what the, we're talking about, and that's what the songs were about that were playing over my playlist that I don't even control. It's just the most popular songs in Christian music are played that week. And so that's what was playing on my, on my headphones yesterday. And it's probably the best known phrase out of this book of Zechariah is in chapter 4, verse 6. And it says this, It's not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's army. I love that because the Hebrew term for spirit is roke, and it's, it's the word that means wind in some contexts. Or the Greek word in the New Testament for spirit is pneuma, and it also can mean wind. And that's, I love that because like, like the Holy Spirit, wind is something that's unseen, but it creates visible results. And wind strength is only accessed when the conditions are right. And the Holy Spirit's only accessed when we're right. Like the Holy Spirit, wind has a greater power than our own effort. There's so many parallels that are just unbelievable. There's a lot we can learn about the Holy Spirit, especially in this Old Testament book even. But I want us to skip down a couple of verses. The prophet Zechariah is prophesying to a, a man named Zerubbabel, and thank God we don't name people like that today. <laughs> but they're talking about rebuilding the temple. And in verses 8 to 10, Zechariah has a vision. It's his fifth vision in this book. 
and he's encouraging Zerubbabel. And in verse 9, um, God says to Zerubbabel, he's laid the foundations for the temple. He's, he's gotten the, the foundation of the temple ready to go. And he, they started this uh, rebuilding project a number of years before. And you can read about that in Ezra and, and Nehemiah even talks some about it. But when this rebuilding began, the priests dressed in their robes. They held their trumpets while the Levites stood with their symbols in their hands to lead the people of Israel in praise to God. They were praising him for what he was doing. So all together the people shouted and they gave thanks to God for his goodness and his love. And there's an amazing celebration that happens when this foundation of the temple was laid. Then you fast forward about 17 years and not much else happens. And we get to this chapter here, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8, and it says, Then another message came to me from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple, and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's army has sent me. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hands. That word that's translated there, despise, do not despise these small beginnings in Hebrew, it means to hold in contempt or to, to hold it. It, 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 it kind of gives this idea of showing uh, disrespect for somebody or something. It's not respecting it. It's, it's giving it just nothing. You don't care about it. It's, 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 it's minor. It doesn't mean anything. The, the statement also has almost a cautionary tone that one of the translations, the NET Bible, translates, this, translates it this way. It says, who dares make light of small beginnings? The, uh, the small beginnings refers to that Zerubbabel returning and the Jews starting to work on the temple. And in our context that we're in, and when I read that this week and was looking at it again, I thought, man, that's exactly where we are today. We're laying the foundation for Faithway Church. We're putting it down. And the foundation is, uh, we're laying a foundation for God to do a work here in this community in Baser. And I was thinking about that passage and where we are today, and it made me think of three things, and, and we'll just hit these real quick. Here's the first one. We can't belittle the small beginnings. What do I mean by that? Here, here's what I mean. We're a small church. We're a brand new church. We don't have years of history and funds to be able to do or be something that we're not. Right now, we don't have a permanent home. You know, we're meeting in somebody else's building. We don't have a ton of flashy equipment and facilities, but we have what God's given us to start with. We don't have, all, you know, children's and youth ministries yet, but we're just getting started. We don't have rooms for them yet. I mean, Joe's running all over the place. I mean, and he's having fun, but there's nothing in the world wrong with that. That's okay. We love it. I love it. I do. You know, even having children and youth ministries, that wasn't started until the 1950s, so I guess... I don't know what they did with kids and teenagers before 1950 for all the thousands of years of church history. They must just not have been allowed to go to church. Of course I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, but he's hearing all this, so he's going to grow up well-grounded. Yeah. That's right. Well, he always asks. He, there was a chair. That chair was right here when we started, and Tim goes, do we need a chair here? And it was because before we started, he looked over at me and says, I just need to preach for a couple minutes and have me put a chair here so he can stand up and talk. And he loves to do that. He does it after church every week. Uh, and that's fun. But we don't have all of those things yet. We don't have room for them here, but we don't have a full-time staff because we can't support that yet. But we don't have all the things that, that I grew up in church thinking that a church should have. And or if you grew up in church, we don't have all of those things, and those things will come. But we shouldn't feel like we have to apologize for that. Mm -hmm. This is where God has us. Mm -hmm. And this is the time God has us here, and we have exactly what God has given us and what God wants us to start with. If he wanted us to start with the other things, he would have given it to us. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't, and he hasn't. So we've got to be thankful for what he's given to us because if we belittle where we are and what we have, we're really complaining and belittling God. Because he's the one who's given it to us and put us where we are. He's the one who's, who has us here. He's the one who's given us what we have. And it doesn't mean we shouldn't have vision and look forward to what God is going to do. Man, I'm, I'm looking 10 years down the road all the time thinking about how awesome things are going to be. But the timing of all of that is in God's hands and not ours. And we've got to be thankful for what he has given us, not for what we don't have. 
Because if we belittle where we are and what we have, we'll miss out on what God has for us right now. And he's got something special for us. While I was thinking about it too, I thought, you know, not only can we not belittle it, but we can't listen to the enemy belittle our small beginnings either because Satan would love nothing more than to discourage us with what we don't have and what we can't do yet. He would love nothing more than to get us discouraged and down and say, well, we just can't do it, so we might as well just quit. And if we listen to him, we're going to miss out on what God has for us. And if we listen to him, we're going to want to walk away and we're going to want to quit. But we're at the beginning of a long journey, and God's brought us together to follow him and to make a difference in this community for him. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. God is rejoicing in heaven to see the work begin, and so should we. We should be rejoicing about what God's doing. So that's the third thing is we need to rejoice with the Lord at our small beginning. You know, I don't know what the future holds, and, and none of us do. But I do know who holds the future. It's like the old song, the old hymn that says, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live for day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. That's an old hymn, and I, as I was thinking about that, I, that hymn came to my mind. I had remembered something that I had totally forgotten about. My grandfather, my dad's dad, who was a circuit ride Methodist preacher for years while my dad was growing up and then became a Baptist preacher and preached all, started planting churches all over uh, Virginia up the 81 corridor. Some are still in existence today. That was the song that my grandmother had me sing at his funeral when I was a teenager. And it reminded me of, of that today, or, or yesterday when I was studying. So the Lord's message for Zerubbabel was that when his spirit touches something that looks small and is inconsequential, God will do something significant. And that's what God has for us today. That's God's word for us today. If we'll allow his spirit because remember, that's, that was the beginning the, the, in chapter 4. That was one of the first verses we looked at. It says, um, it's not by force or by strength, but by my spirit. That's the theme of this book is it's God's spirit, not our strength. So if we'll allow God's spirit to fill us and to lead us as we follow him and beginning this work that he's allowed us to be a part of, he's going to do something amazing. But we've got to trust him. We've got to go at his speed, which is hard for me because I'm a very impatient person. And I know some other people are very impatient. <laughs> Not going to mention any names, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but we can, we've got to be careful not to get ahead of God. We've got to go at his speed. And whatever that is, we've got to thank him for it. And we've got to be ready for it. And instead of thinking about all the things in the future, all the things we don't have, all the things we want to do. Let's enjoy where he has us right now and not miss the blessings that he has for us right now. Because in 10 years, we're going to be turning around and looking at this time and thinking, man, how awesome was that and how much fun was that? And then sometimes we're going to be thinking, man, if we could just go back to that. <laughs> well, we didn't have a mortgage or we didn't have all these bills and we didn't have these problems and we didn't have COVID or, or whatever is going to come down the road that we're going to be turning around looking back at. Let's just enjoy where we're planted right now so we don't miss what God's doing. So do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. So let's talk about it. What do you think? What, what's the standing out? Yep. Um, this was a verse I wrote down, and I think I shared it a, a while back. But um, because for me, I was kind of despising the small beginning. I was wanting some of the kids and everything. But um, just even today, like this is the new year, and I feel like Satan's trying to get me down with this little guy just running around. <laughs> you know, it's kind of. But um, it's 
doesn't matter. Like, I, I feel better knowing that Satan's trying to fight this even harder, you know? Like, he knows that God's going to use this place. Yeah, see, <coughs> see, Satan is not all-knowing. He doesn't know the future, but I believe he can tell when God is going to do something. He can see it lining up. But I think that you put pressure on yourself because you think yeah. that it bothers us, but it doesn't bother us. Well, and that's like, the thing about, like, how He's he, going to be, like, our child. Like, he's yeah. going to be somebody that we're going to watch grow, that we're going to, when he gets 25 years old, we're going to say, I like him that much. You know, so it's... Well, and I think like what, when he was saying about how it's not church the way that we think it was supposed to be or how we grew up with it. And so that's why, like, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, he's wanting to get up and preach and... Sometimes he copies some of the things he says in the middle of the message, and he will look back at me and he goes, 12 men, you know? And so, um, I'm like you said, I'm at least hearing it, and I find my power. Well, that's what the song was, break down the walls of all our traditions. Yeah. Yep. classes. They stayed with us in church for a long time. We just took little things for them. So there, I mean... Yep. Who else? Well, I've had that conversation with my dad, who is from the traditional generation. And I would say something about where we used to go to church and that, well, the teens are in the service now. Or, and he's like, that's the way it should be. <laughs> and, you know, but he's from that generation where, you know, the kids need to be there. They need, yeah, he's getting up and walking around, but, you know, they need to learn that being in the, um, the congregation. And one thing we used to do at um, Oakland Door is the teens would stand for the singing and they would be able to be a part of that worship time and then they went to their own lesson time. And, and I think always it's good, you know, we need to be nurturing and they need to be seeing adults in that worship time. So I think whatever we're doing is the right thing. Right. Because it's who we are. You know, so we've also been at a church where the teens had their Sunday, their stuff was Sunday night. And they stayed in church the whole time on Sunday morning. So it wasn't like a, it wasn't like, you know, on Sunday morning. Yeah, it wasn't segregated like that. They had their fun and they're rocking out on Sunday night. But Sunday morning they were in the church. Although what was cool about that church is that every, the teens every Sunday morning, all of them were up front for worship mm -hmm. and it was cool because a lot of the adults would go down there and stand with them and it was just fun to watch them all everybody together like you know so that's a, and that's what it should be parents with their kids and you know <coughs> so i remember sitting in church with my grandparents and you know my grandma she'd give you a, a half a stick of dead teen or you know, half a stick of <laughs> Like and then my other grandpa, he always had pockets full of candy, and it, you know the kids always went to him after church. And, you know, so there's lots of things that you will remember that you know become uh, just very sentimental, yeah, of yeah. value to you. And, and yeah, it is. I love watching Joe preach. <laughs> um, I really, really liked the message this morning. I, kind of spoke to me because I think um, for a while I've almost used what we don't what we don't have as an excuse not to do the ministry or at least that that's kind of what I felt like it's like well when we have this then we can invite people when we have this we can grow and all that and um, you know I, I read a scripture this this week where Paul said hey I've got I've got a kind of a secret to life be content where you're at mm. you know and you kind of spoke to that today you know, he was speaking about he was content when he had abundance and he was content when he had nothing. Yeah. And that was the kind of the secret to, to, to life is what God taught him. And so I think the, the lesson kind of applies for us where we're at right now. This is, this is great. We do with what we have and then we'll see where we go. Yep. Just have to be faithful. Very good. I mean, I look forward to church every Sunday in our small beginnings, you know. Just like I did when we were at bigger, I probably look forward to coming here more. Honestly, I do. I, I really do. I, I mean, seriously, I, I, I look forward to being here with with my people. Yeah, your people, I love it. With, with my we're, we're your people. It's right. good, Dave. I wrote uh, for today with Lindsay and Caleb and Anna. 
we were talking about how kind of strange it is to be on the first day of a new year. And Caleb said, it just feels funny, you know, you got this new year coming and uh, uh, it makes you feel kind of apprehensive. And I told him that sometimes on New Year's Day, I, I feel kind of empty. I don't know, it's just a, it's a funny feeling. And we all came to the conclusion, just like you just said, that the key is to live each day, live one day at a time. And that's like a cliche, but uh, I'm probably being too metaphysical, but that's all we ever have is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's never yesterday, and it's never tomorrow. It's always just now. That's all we ever have, and that's really what God wants us to focus on right now. What are you doing now? And uh, it sure takes away a lot of worry <laughs> and a lot of stress if you quit trying to look forward to, you know, the cloudy days that might come or whatever, and just just focus on now and what God has given us now, and we really should enjoy it to the utmost. This time in our life will never be repeated. When we leave here today, this will be the past. Uh, so it's very important for us to enjoy what God's given us, make the most of it, and uh, really just don't worry about uh, anything else other than what we're doing right now. Yep. And it makes you feel a lot more secure. Amen. <coughs> very good. Anybody else? Well, I had, <clears throat> you know, I had time to reflect on uh, life this week. Uh, many of you know, lost my little brother. And uh, so during death, you know, you reflect on your childhood and your past and everything. And uh, I remember uh, years ago we had a men's retreat. And uh, they, uh, you know, they, they interviewed this uh, these older people, uh, you know, we had, anyway, somebody did, and so that was part of the message, you know, and these senior citizens, which I guess I am now. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but two of the things, I think there was three, but I can think of only two right now, but one of them was they wished they would have uh, took more risk, you know, in mm. life, you know, and and I know I've done that, you know. I've, I've lived that, and I'm grateful for that, you know. And the other thing that they wished is they wished they would have stopped to reflect more on things in their life, you know, and just uh, took it all in more, you know. And, uh, and, you know, sometimes at a funeral, that's what you do. You reflect back to the past and, and how you lived your life. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, it's good memories for some of that things, you know, and uh, and I grew up in as a preacher's kid, too, and uh, drug to church, you know, drug kid, because I drug to church oh, Sunday morning. That's right. <laughs> Raised on but, drugs. You know, but uh, that, those were good times, and we we always had to sit in the church services, too, you know, growing mm -hmm. up, and went to small churches, and, uh, you know, but those were good times, and uh, so right now, that's where we are here at our, where the Lord has brought us, you know. Mm -hmm. Why did he bring us out here to base, you know? Uh, that there is a miracle, you know. And, uh, you know, so we're taking a risk right now with this new beginning. And uh, it's good to reflect <coughs> on what God's doing, too. And so yeah. just thankful for, for that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of... Uh, you know, Bill losing his brother this week. I got a message last night that uh, Wilma Bush passed away. So I don't know if you guys knew that or not. But. Anybody else? What are you doing? I'm going to close that out whenever you're ready. <laughs> <He's prepared. laughs> Who says we're no? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Tim's ready to go, so we we'll just get off the stage. I'm done. <laughs> Talked about patience. Yeah. <laughs> not, not exercising patience. <laughs> <laughs> this because the chief started. <laughs> well, as we close out, just have a few things for you. Um, first of all, uh, Noemi brought the shirts. 
that uh, we were promised it originally. So go by and get those, your right size. And I think uh, um, you're supposed to write down the shirt you, you took so we make sure everybody's got what they, what they ordered, okay? And then, oh, man. <laughs> Not prepared. <laughs> Thank you, sister, for pointing that out. Um, so Andy talked about, you know, we've been working for quite a while on the Constitution and bylaws of Faithway Church, and here they are. Uh, we, we're going to make these available to you for review um, at a later date, um, but uh, here, here they are. And not only is the Constitution and bylaws there, it's, it's how we're going to run the church. There's also uh, um, affirmations of what we believe in there. Uh, we also have this document here where it breaks down the essentials of doctrine, uh, convictions, and preferences. And there's a, there's a difference between the three. So we're going to make this document available to you as well. But it's just, this, this document just talks about some of the core beliefs that we have here at Faithway. <clears throat> and then uh, we also have created a membership packet. Um, and we'll go through that kind of thing too. But um, there's, a, there's a call to membership here. You can continue to be just a, an attender if you like. But if you want to be a member, then we've got a, a process for that. So I just wanted to let you know that we are... We, we're progressing behind the scenes here, and uh, the Elder Board is going to be meeting here fairly soon to kind of sign off on all of this, but uh, I'm really glad to have this completed. <laughs> so glad. <clears throat> and uh, again, I appreciate uh, Dave's work as well on this, and um, I think it's good. All right. Um, and then uh, something else that I just felt like I, I wanted to share, this came out of uh, a conversation I had with a friend this, this weekend. And, you know, I know a lot of you have been saved for a long time, and maybe some of you have not. Um, but I want to encourage you to, uh, in this new year, to spend more time with the Lord. And what I mean by that, in prayer and in the Word. And we talk about that a lot, but we don't really dig into how we do that. And I want to share today how I do it as maybe an example. And, and if you like it, then you can uh, follow suit. Um, I know that some of you journal when you read. I know Jody's, you, you journal, right, when you read the word? I know Pam does, um, and, and I do as well. And I, I just want to kind of give you an example here. So um, in, in this journal, you know, I've, I've got where I've listed the scripture that I'm reading. And then there's a, there's a section there for prayer as well. And then just a, a section of reflection. So <clears throat> I, I'm going to just read a few verses not prepared again. <clears throat> Just to give you an example of, of what I mean by this. Okay, so uh, this is one of the, the uh, passages of scripture that I studied this week, and it was Philippians chapter 4. And I'll just focus on uh, verses 4 through 8 and maybe 12. Okay, so Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 12, it says, <clears throat> I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So in, in my reflections part of it, after I read that, I thought about it for a little while. And I, and I, I just kind of wrote back what, what I heard. And then what you do is you start looking for opportunities. So you say, okay, what, what does it say? What does this, this passage say? And then what does it, what does it mean to me? And, don't, and I want to I encourage you, you can read the, the passage, and you might not understand all of it. That's okay. This Bible will be revealed to you over time. And Andy, do you learn something every time you open up the Word? Pretty much every time, no matter how many times you've read it. And, and I see a lot of people shaking their head here. So don't be discouraged if, like, oh, I don't even, what, what is Paul talking about there? Just look for what God points out to you. Well, when I read this this week, I, uh, some things point, just jumped out to me. I, I heard, 
rejoice in the Lord always. I should, ha I should rejoice. I should uh, be known by my gentleness. Um, there's no need to worry about anything. Prayer is the key. I can make my request known to God in what way? Well, in humility and with thanksgiving. And then I think, then I wrote this like, benefit of such prayer, question mark? Well, the benefit is peace of God, and that's going to guard my heart and mind. Um, and then what should I think about every day? Well, I should think about what's true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, praiseworthy. And then, and then what's going to happen is the God of peace will be with me. And then I, I talked about this earlier. I mentioned, okay, the secret Paul writes here is knowing how to be content in plenty and in need. And then I have confidence. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And then there was even some other verses here where it talked about giving. And when I give... I encourage others, and it allows God to work through me to bless others. So you see, everything that kind of just jumped out there, I read it, and then I wrote it. And there's something kind of magical about writing what you've, what you've read. Um, I think you, you, know, you probably all know this, is that when you read something, you can read it and go, what did I just read? And you read it again, it's like, I still, didn't, I still don't remember what I read. Well, if you force yourself to write what you've read, then it, it, it's something happens. It gets stuck in your brain. Well, the other thing is prayer. <clears throat> now, some people think all you can, <laughs> the only way you can pray is you have to close your eyes and you have to pray. And, and some people think it's hard to pray, but you're just talking to God. And you're just laying out your requests and, and your concerns and your feelings. You just talk to him like he's your friend. Um, but he's a friend that can, can deliver. <laughs> now, he's no genie. We're not rubbing the, the, uh, the lamp and asking for three wishes. By, uh, nothing like that. But I'm going to give you some examples of, of what my prayer was like this week. Um, I prayed for my brother Bill and the loss of his um, brother. And I prayed that, um, that God would protect Pat as she traveled back up and that he would, uh, he would protect Bill as he traveled back up from there. <clears throat> I prayed for my daughters and their, and their, um, their husbands. Um, I pray for the Holy Spirit to fill, <clears throat> fill me with his power. Um, I prayed for my buddy Steve this week. Um, I prayed for this church and for all of you. And that God would use this church and he would lead us into the next steps. I prayed for Rick. And I prayed for Tony that God would heal them. I prayed for encouragement for, for Jody. I prayed for, for Ernesto because his job's stressful and I know it can be dangerous. And I thank God for both of you is what I did. I prayed for Andy that he would be healed from his flu this week. I prayed for this morning that God would just bless us in this service this morning and that he would, he would speak to every one of us. Those are just some of the things that I, I prayed for this week. And, um, and I'm just encouraging you to do the same thing. Just don't, just don't read. And if you're not reading at all, just start. Um, just pick up the word and don't, don't be afraid of it. God will reveal what he wants you to. All right, that's it. Thanks, Tim. You bet. You're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>